the Lord is going to turn your mess into your message. Yeah. Discovery of your purpose through the love of God. I believe so much in God's love. Thank you, Father. Once again, flow through these frail lips of clay. In this next few minutes, Lord, let your wisdom come forth. Let your fire come forth, O oh God. Consuming everything that is not of you in the lives of your people. Thank you, Father, because you're going to empower every one of your daughters and sons. And even those watching through social media right now. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you and ordained you a prophet to the nations. So the Lord is saying to you, before he formed you in the womb, that he knew you. And he ordained you. Fill in the blank. Because you have to know what he's called you for. And in this story, in this passage of scripture, you know, if we read the background to it, Jeremiah was, you know, was doubting God. He was saying, no, 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 no. I am not, you know, I'm just a child. I'm just, I mean, who am I? Prophet to the nation? No, I'm just a farmer, a shepherd or whatever. And he was going back and forth with God. And then his eyes opened. And the Lord said, what do you see? He said, I see the branch of an almond tree. And God said, I'm ready to perform my word. What do you see? Today, I'm trusting God that you will begin to see yourself differently. Amen. I'm trusting that you will not see yourself the way you've seen yourself before. Amen. You will not call yourself what they called you. Yeah. Today, you are going to dump all those lies that you've believed, all those lies that they've told you. Yeah. That you have believed, that you have imbibed, that you have said, okay, this is my story. But you are going somewhere. Because your story is going to change. Yes. And let me tell you, your story is going to become your glory. Right. Never be ashamed of your story. Never be ashamed of what you've been through or what you are going through. Because it's going to be deliverance for someone else. It's going to help someone else. Because you're going to say, if not for that. I would not have drawn closer to the Lord. I would not have discovered. I would have not gone deeper with him. I would not have known his love. If I didn't feel rejection at some point in time in my life, I would not have gone out to just look for. The Lord turned my eyes to prostitutes on the streets. He opened my eyes that these ones are in need of love. These ones are struggling. They, you just, I just began to wonder, why do they do that? This is someone's daughter. This is someone's sister. Just standing by the streets. And I began to love on them. I began to help them. And I began to find fulfillment. Because the Lord had filled me with his love. Yes. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, 5, that the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So what you're looking for is within you. Amen. If you're a child of God, if you've received the Lord into your heart, God is love. And so his love resides in you. Stop looking for love in the wrong places. Stop begging for love. You are worthy. You are to die for. Oh, you didn't realize someone died for you? I mean, it's too late. Yes, you're looking for that man that will sweep you off your feet and all of that. Look at the love of Jesus. He went to the cross. He paid the price. He laid down his life. And that is why the word says, husbands, love your wives as what? Christ loved the church. But you know, for many of them, it's like a tall order. It's like this is impossible. And they think it's impossible when they have not submitted to the Lord. Because yeah. he's not calling them to do it in their own strength. He said, as Christ loved the church. So look at how I love the church. And I will teach you how to love your wife. How to love your own. And of course, the same goes for us too. Because he says, wives should be submitted to their husband. It's still love. It is love. So we are to love one another. We're to love people. The whole summary, the whole Bible is a love story. 
how man strayed away. It was love. God loved the first man, Adam, and then he created a woman and said, you know, it can be sweeter for him. Hello? God is humble. I'm sure that you are shocked by that. Because if he was not, Adam was okay by himself, right? And the few men here say amen. <laughs> not really. <laughs> huh? But then he was okay and God said, look, come. I'll make someone, you know, like you. Even though there's a vertical relationship already. But I think it can be more colorful. I think you, you can do your work better if I give you someone by your side. That is flesh and blood like you. And then you both look up to me. And you can gist with me, but you can gist with one another. So where did we go wrong? Why is there so much hate out there in the world? He didn't design it this way. Should God say, oh, I made a mistake that I made man? Of course, somewhere along the line, he said, look, I just regret this whole thing. Wow. Too much blood because they have to sacrifice each time they sin. They sacrifice the blood. And Lord, we're sorry. And he says, there's just too much blood. Okay, I'm going to send someone once and for all. And so when you look to him, my heart will melt. Amen, amen. Did you get that? Yes. And that's why he said to Jesus, you will go. Uh -huh. He was there with the Father in glory. Yes. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. How do I know? Because in the beginning he said, let us make man in our image. So they were never one. Yes. Yes. So he's like, who will go? The second person of the Trinity said, yes. okay. And he came and grew up from a baby as man so that we won't feel like he dropped from the sky. Amen. And so we can look at him. He said, come unto me all who are labor, who labor and burden, you know, I have heavy laden and I will give you rest and take my yoke upon you. I think that's Matthew 10, 28. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Like, just look at me. The message translation says, I will teach you the unforced rhythms of life. Just follow me. I will show you how. It's not meant to be hard. It's not meant to be hard. If life is hard, if it's difficult, then we're not looking at him enough. Many times we look at our rejection, but we don't look at our acceptance, the one that has accepted us. We're looking at those rejecting us when we're, we're wanting more of their love and we're, we are aching for their validation and we're running after them. And God is saying, run after me. Run after me. Because I'm all yours and I'm here and I'm waiting. And you know, as I prepared the other day, I was just preparing. I found myself also even shedding tears because that was some days ago. I found out that I think I was also a little bit far. And he was saying, um, let me fill you up. Let me fill you up. And it was, you know, I just got this illustration like, you know, when your gas is low... Yeah. Back where I come from, we call it fuel. <laughs> Petrol, so it Petrol. But there's diesel also. Anyway, so when the fuel is low, but here we say gas. So when the gas is low in the tank, when your tank is almost empty, you're driving carefully. You're, you're reserving. You're, you're just going. You, you can't go where you want to go. You're tiptoeing. You're choosing. If I go this way, I'm not going to. You're, you're just. But when it's full. When it's full. You go where you want to go. Courageously. Driving towards your destination. Because there is more than enough. So when your gas is low and you don't even think there's a gas station on the way. Or you don't have money. But he said, come to me, all you who thirst. Yes. And he said, we should come and buy without money. Yes. Hello. Yes. Because it is free. Where did I even write it? Yes. Because it is what? Free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, so fill up your tank and drive confidently. To your destination. Even when you're not even sure where you're going. But you know that he fills you up. So that's why he said we should come to him. And it will be in us. That well. John 7, 37. 
He said, on the last day and the great feast, Jesus stood and cried out, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Hallelujah. And so when your spouse, or your partner, or that person, fall, when they fall short of that love, you're able to keep drinking and depending on the strength and the love that you know God has for you. Hello. So you're not supposed to say, hey, husband, man, you are supposed to love me as Christ loved the church. But he's not perfect. And maybe what if on some days, it's a little funny because his tank is also low. Because he's also running on empty. Would you continue to look to man to do it for you? But because you're full, you will also then be praying for him. You will also be able to pour into him. Because when we don't do that, the cycle goes on. Two empty tankers. Two empty tanks. I'm empty. You're empty. So how can I fill you? And I'm looking for you to fill me. How can, we will fight because I'm like, you're supposed to give me. But you're like, I don't have what to give. And we both don't have what to give. So why don't we look to that well, that fountain, that forever, forever flowing, forever flowing. The woman by the well in John chapter 4, she, she, she wanted to get water. And Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God, if you knew the love, if you knew he was standing by you, you will ask me for water. And she was still like, you? Why are you talking to me in the first place? You're even a Samaritan. You have no business talking to me. Can you imagine? The savior of her soul. She was still giving him like the... Because he didn't know who he was. But when we know who he is to us, oh my God, we will always dive into his presence. Like the deer when he pants for water brooks. So our souls will pant for him. You know why they said that? Because when the deer is bitten, we know in Atlanta, how many of us have seen deers before? I have in my backyard. I'm like, okay, all the years I started, you know, coming to Atlanta, going back and forth and, I realized that there are a lot of deers in this place. Call them antelopes, whatever. Brown. The speckled ones or the plain ones. I'm telling you. And then I realized it was not a big deal. And these days I'm jogging on the road and then you can actually see a sign like to be careful because a deer might be crossing the road. And each time I keep thinking, I said, my people back home in Africa, where is the jungle now? Because I don't see no deer on the road in Lagos. We may see some cows in the north. <laughs> so this is really exciting. I stumbled on Instagram one day. I think it was Andy Stanley's post. One of the pastors here in Atlanta. And he put this picture of two baby deers in his backyard. <laughs> My sister is here. Let me concentrate and continue my message. <laughs> so we had these two antelopes, two, two deers in the backyard. And I said, look what we found. That was in his backyard, you see. I wasn't surprised. And then the swipe to the next picture. There was this mother and um, deer, big one, standing in front of their gate, inside their property. So he was like, okay, the mother is maybe going to, she had just given birth. I was trying to go out of their gate to go and look for food. I'm like, so where is the jungle? <laughs> Atlanta, USA, or Nigeria? I'm like, people back home don't know in Atlanta you see deers on the road, and it's not a big deal. Ooh. But he said it will make my feet like the deer's feet, like the deer's feet, because they're good, but if they kick you, yeah. ah, you're gone. So I started by saying the deer, because the Bible says, as the deer pants after the water brook, so my soul pants after you. So the story is that when a deer is bitten by an animal, maybe a lion or whatever, the, the antelope, the, the cheetah or whatever animal in the forest, usually goes for the neck, because that's where the blood, you know, whatever, and the blood will flow. But what the deer does and what they know to do instinctively is that they run to the nearest river. They run to the nearest river and once they can put their neck there, 
the blood stops. And then they know they will not die. But their predator knows that once I just, not the leg, not anywhere, once I take a chunk here, they just bleed to death. And I can go and grab. The enemy will not grab you. The enemy will not find you. He may bite you, but you will live. Because you will know better than to run to the presence of God. You will know better than even to call me on the phone because I may not be able to help you. But you will run to the river of life. And your soul will be saved because the bleeding will stop. Look, he shed his blood for us once and for us. He, he gave us his love. And that's why God just says, if you look to him or you call his name, I won't even be angry with you anymore. Because I've done it. Jesus is, permit me to say this, that's the person who makes God weak. Not weak that way, but you call his name, it's like, oh gosh, my arms are tied. I can't. That is why in the New Testament, you don't see an angry God. There's so much anger in the Old Testament. Came sometimes I don't feel like reading the Old Testament. Who's on the same page with me? Sometimes I don't even like reading the Old Testament because it's more like, but there's some nice parts, you know, like Jeremiah that we just read. You know, that said I, I, before I knew you. But there's some parts where like they go to war, kill this and build that. But that was before Jesus came. But after he came, God said, no more shedding of blood, no more sacrifices. I gave him to you once and for all. So once you call his name, what do you say, Lord? In Jesus' name. God says, it's done. I mean, go, just go. Because I know what it cost him. That's why he said, he that gave his only son to us, how will he together with him not give us freely all things that pertain to life and godliness? So it's about our relationship with him. And that's why I've come to tell you, grow in your relationship with God. That's the first thing. Develop your relationship, and it's a relationship of love. Where's my notes? I've messed it up. I don't even know where I am right now. <laughs> okay. So, grow. The more you realize the depth of God's love towards you, the more you have the energy and the guts to be yourself. Did someone catch that? Because Ephesians, did I get to read that? It's Ephesians 3, 14 to 18. Write it down, read it when you get home. And then 3, 20, 20 to 21. But he says, you know, for this reason I bind my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven is, and earth is named, that he will grant unto you, according to his riches and glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend or understand with all of us, all the saints, what is the width, the length, the depth, the height of this love? Yes. That you may be able to comprehend. So I say the deeper you grow in God's love, the more you understand his love for you, the more energy you have or guts or boldness or courage to be yourself. Yes. To stop running around and begging for love. Because when we do that, sometimes it's like we don't remember. And many times I've got to just try and remember how much he loves me. This will do it for you in marriage or no marriage, rejection, job or no job. When you look to him and you let him remind you that, but I love you. And you just need to discover your purpose. Romans 8.28, it says... All things work together for good to them who love God and who are the called according to his purpose. He loves you. That is settled. He can come and crucify Jesus again. I mean, it's once and for all. Now, but do you love him? But do you know him? Do you know the depth of this love? And then seeking to discover your purpose in the midst of it. So if your purpose looks like Nothing else anybody else is doing. You are bold enough and you have enough love and strength to say, I'll stand alone. It's okay. I know who sent me. I know who has spoken to me. I know in whom I believed. Hallelujah. 
It's amazing. It's amazing. So be aware that you are in a relationship. You don't use him, but you seek to please him. Paul said those who are single, they bother about, you know, seeking the Lord, pleasing the Lord, pleasing the Lord. We all should please the Lord. We were created for what? His good pleasure. Pleasure is from the word please, to please. We're to please the Lord because he made us for his pleasure. He didn't create us for stress. He didn't create us for him to shake his head again and say, I, you know, I regret making man. No. Now, those who are married, Paul said, you, in addition to seeking the Lord, then you must please your spouse. Right. So know what you're going into. Amen. Hello? <laughs> so in between that, you look to the Lord for wisdom. You read, you understand, you gain the wisdom to be able to marry the two, Right? But if you're single, yeah, you don't bother about me. If you like, don't eat for days. That's your business. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> now, run with God's love in all that you do. Be conscious of his love at work, at school, at play, wherever you are, be conscious of God's love. Because if you are conscious of his love, there's a level below you will not sink. You will not sink. Depression will want to come, but it will not depress. And to anyone going through depression, whatever, pain, loneliness, deep, you're coming out in Jesus' name. You're coming out. You're not going to believe that lie anymore. That you're not good enough. And you will never sink that low anymore. Amen. Be always conscious of his love. Yes. Someone said an ugly word to you, but God loves me. Yes. And we need to teach our children that too. Yes. Oh, he's a bully. He said I'm a big fat head, but God loves me. <laughs> but God loves us. says I'm beauty, beautiful. But God, you, you've got to hear him saying it, it to you. You've got to be that close. And that way you'll be able to lift your head high. And they're wondering, why are you so confident? Why are you so... Yeah? Because you have a lover. And he teaches you to love yourself. That's why I tell people, I usually make this joke around when Valentine's Day is coming. And that's when people get all edgy. Am I going to get flowers? I don't have someone in my life. Blah, 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 blah. Especially women. We're all women here. So, right? Right? Right. And you're thinking, okay, I don't have a boyfriend, I don't have a man friend, I don't have a whatever, whatever. And you have a husband. And, and yes, some have husband, but you know nothing is coming. So you're as good as being alone. You already know nothing is coming. So those who don't have and those who have, yes. So I said, you're single. Like, don't get uptight. Before the day, go buy yourself a card. Buy yourself some flowers. Address the car to yourself. Mail it. If you're running late, let it be priority mail. Mail it to your office, not to your house. To your office. So when it comes to you, you're like, and then your colleagues or your friends in the office are like, what's it? He said, no. Who is there? You go, mm -mm. let me read my card. There must be someone new in your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're not lying. You're loving yourself. So if I was in that position, I would write a card to Nikke from Tammy. Tammy is my middle name. And then you go to the restaurant and say, they say, table for two? No, one. Uh -huh. And you have your little flower, put it on the table. It. Order your food. Eat your food. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Or you say, table for two. Who is coming? The Holy Spirit. <laughs> no, it's some people are saying, this is not a joke. I mean, you don't know what I'm going through and you're laughing. I've been there, done that. I've been there and I found that it's not worth it. 
where you cry your eyes out, you bawl out, you look at the mirror and you're like, is this me? And then you start another round because of self-pity. Why? Why should you pity yourself? If someone doesn't recognize you for who God has made you, then you recognize yourself because the problem is with them, not with you. God didn't have a nightmare when he made you. He was having sweet dreams. Thank you, Jesus. So have fun with his love. Relax and be intimate. It's because we're not intimate enough. Like I said some days ago when he was telling me about the low gas, empty tank and whatever, and I found myself just saying, God, I've missed you. Sometimes we can be all looking good and, you know, we feel all, but you know deep down yes. you're not as intimate as you should be. Yes. And you can actually experience that with God. Come on. Yes, you can. Where you know you've missed him and where he has missed you. Yes. Where it's just you and him yes. in that place. Yes. It's not like you've not been having your quiet time every day, but you know that just alone just alone. Some of us are too, you know, too, having people all around all the time. Even if you're an extrovert, there are times where you just say, you know what, everybody's not at home. I'm glad it's just me. So nobody's going to be bad, it's not me. And you can sing. You are the love of my life. You are the hope that I that's it. all over but you'll find no other and I'm not just saying it like a cliche because I think it's time we move on from pity party whether someone loves you or not whether your husband is in a good mood or not whether he's loving you so well today the way you want to be loved or not because he's still man God doesn't have mood swings Can we just be on the same page with him? Because for me, this is where the enemy kept tripping me up. I knew I had a great destiny. I had, knew I had a great ministry. But when I feel emotionally something about something not feeling right, that's it. Down goes everything. You're so, but you know, you can always be pumped. Amen. <laughs> I'm saying using that word pumped because Kim is always pumped. It's a choice, I know. I try to be all the time too, especially when I look to God's love. That's why I say when I'm feeling low, I look to his love. But I don't know if anyone is here, you've been sinking, sinking, sinking. Look to his love. And let a smile break out on your face. And go out. Go have a spa. As they're massaging your body, Think about his love. Think about his goodness. If I ask them, you know what, I don't want your music because I came with mine. <laughs> Put your phone on. I trust you have all kinds of you know, lovely music on your phone. Put it on. I'm no longer a slave. By the time you're done, they didn't just massage your body. You've met with the Lord than sitting down waiting for somebody. And you have great dreams. You have great dreams. Okay. Don't say I have no one to help me accomplish this dream. Start out somewhere. When you start out, people will come and join you. They will then ask, how can we support? 
Like the conferences now, people ask on Instagram, how can we support? We love to volunteer. Day one, it wasn't like that. Just you and yourself. People need to see there's something going on. Because people don't want to be part of, they already have enough like challenges and gloom in their lives. So when you look gloomy and your face looks like you have a long way to go, they're like, nah, I better go towards Kim. She's always happy. I better gravitate towards Nikkei. She's always bubbly. So you wonder why you don't have like friends or people seem to be far from you. Even a rabbit in the animal kingdom, when he sees a lion coming, she runs. Why? Because she said, this one will eat me for lunch. <laughs> so you don't want someone that's going to multiply your pain. But above all, you will be a distributor of joy. You're going to move from mess to message. From pain to power. And that is going to affect your work. I'm rounding up now. Can't even finish all the notes. But that's going to go through. You're going to... Um, it's going to show in your workplace. I believe in love in the workplace. This is, people don't use that word at work because it looks soppy and everything. And they're all about, mm, this is not loving, this is profit. We're here to make profit. So many times the workplace is harsh because it's the bottom line. You have a boss, she's a woman, but she's like, she's not even looking at your face. She doesn't want to care whether what happened to you, whether with your, whoever at home or deliver the work. And you are throwing a pity party because she's even a, a woman and she's supposed to be uh, compassionate towards my, my issues. Is that what you are employed for? You're employed to deliver. So you get your love from the source. And you go and be a blessing in that place. And let me tell you a little secret. When you're going through stuff, look for someone else who is going through something. And encourage them. Before long, you'll be happy. Because they will say, thank you, that lifted me. They say, two wrongs don't make a right. Two sad people can't do no good. So when I'm feeling a bit low, I'm going through trials or issues. I recognize that there are people going through that. And sometimes I begin to text my friends that are strong. Because those ones you know who are strong, sometimes need encouragement too. Or sometimes it's just nice to know that you thought of them. How are you doing? Just checking on you and like, I'm good. That's why I say Kim always says, I'm pumped. <laughs> I'm ready to go. That's your favorite word, right? So, I'm pumped. I'm ready. Right? Yeah. But it's deliberate. Because if you say you're pumped, even if you're not feeling it, soon you will act it. Anyway, you prophesy. You prophesy. Hallelujah. So if you're going through something, don't think, ah, everybody else, you know, oh, my sister, my cousin, that my prayer partner, I know she's doing okay, but I'm the only, they may not be doing okay. Check on them, and it will come back to you. Hallelujah. One minute, and Kim is going to come up. I'm going to get out of here, because we have the time that's been allotted to us. So, God is not out to kill you. But how to see how you will translate his love to yourself and to others. And how it will shape your world's view. It's not a killer. He's a lover. And that's what should shape your world's view. How you see things. I believe that if leaders love themselves, if leaders love their country, then they will make up with other leaders. I don't want to be the president of any country or whatever. It's just on my call. But sometimes I feel if you love your people, you're thinking about them. Then you're thinking how to make life easier for them. I'm going to fix the roads. I'm going to create employment. I'm going to, you're just going to be thinking solution and you're going to look for the people that will help you to solve it. And if your country is fighting over a territory with another country, you're going to say, you know, for the sake of these people, I'm just going to let peace reign. I'm going to let my ego go down and not act like who is better than the other. I'm going to call him and say, let's talk. Right? Real talk. Let's talk. Okay, I know this probably you believe is yours or whatever, the resources. And okay, can we reach an agreement? 
so that there, so that there will not be there won't be wars and then lives are lost needlessly because you're fighting over oil or re- it's always about the resource it's always about the economy many times it's not about you I always tell my husband, I say, politicians, they're doing their career. So do yours. They're doing their career. (laughs) Bottom line. Yeah, they're doing their career. So because you love him, you do what he wants from you. You do not embarrass or do that which displeases him. You obey him. You accept his design of you, your purpose, your call, your vocation in life. And you draw others to him and not away from him. So it's not only for us preachers or talkers or coaches that we are the ones supposed to like help people to be better. Whatever. You work in the bank, you work in a restaurant. I won't mention names because I'm not selling any whatever brands here, but you bring that love, it shows in your work. So love is not just for inside the church. It's actually even for the outside. Because he didn't say, stay ye in the four walls of the church. He said, go ye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why we're having this. Yeah, yeah. It looks like church, but we're not in the church. Yeah, yeah. We're outside because we want people to come, everyone. Hello. 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 Let's spread his joy. Let's spread his love. But how can you spread it if you don't have it? If you don't know it? If you don't seek the depths of it? You won't be able to tell your sister or that stranger in the bus or wherever that, you know what? It's going to be okay. Because you know it's going to be okay. You're no longer just saying it as a cliche. But you know that you know that you know. And the person says, how do you know? And then you share your story. And say, what? You don't even look like what you... Because we don't look like what we've been through. We never look like what we've been through. Because it says, when you go through the fire, you will not be burned. The flame will not be kindled upon you. And through the waters, you will not drown. We never look like what we've been through. Because his glory covers us. Hallelujah. So notice the quietness of his acceptance above the noise of rejection all over you. Decide to be healed. Fan fan to flames your relationship with him. Yeah? Not so that he will leave you, but so that you won't leave him. He doesn't leave us. We are the ones that leave him. We are the ones that backslide. We are the ones that are beginning to think that, you know what, this Christ thing and all of that is beginning to look a bit hazy. There's nothing hazy about it. It's because you've allowed all the things to come into your heart. Choke the word. Deceitfulness of riches, whatever. The words of people bring in rejection. And you're no longer full of his word and full of him. So everything begins to look cloudy. Like, I I don't even know again. And that means you're moving far away from him. But he never left you because they draw near unto me, I will join him. That's why we have to fan that flame of love. We've got to keep the love going so that you don't draw back from him. So you're not trying to say, let me read so God will love me. And he loves you. That's constant. He's not saying if you read my, your Bible, I will. No, but if you don't, the danger is you will be moving far from him. How many people want to stay hot? Too hot for the devil to handle. So you're taking that love walk to the next level. And that in Jesus name, like Paul prayed, I pray that you will be able to, you'll be rooted and grounded in his love and comprehend the depth, the width, the, the length and the breadth of God's love. And to know his peace that passes all understanding. And to find your purpose in him. Because you, you are called according to his purpose. And all things work together for good. So if anything happened, God forbid you are kidnapped. You know it's all good. You know you'll be fine. You know in your heart you're loving him and he's going to bring you out. And you say, even if he doesn't bring me out, I'm not going to stop loving him. He's done too much for me to stop. His love is not, it's not supposed to be conditional. It's a story and he's going somewhere with you. Are you ready to trust him again? Are you ready to fill your tank all again? Are you ready to fill your gas tank so you are not on empty anymore? Praise God. 